Hello again everyone. We're back with another airbrush project and this time Nikki wants a picture of a bee. Yeah, quite a popular theme, the old uh, bees, aren't they? I've done uh, a few bees now. People seem to uh, like pictures of bees. Anyway, given some of the problems we have recently, I'm going to carefully go over this blank. It's already been uh, painted white. Uh, I'm going to go over it with 400 grit paper. There's been uh, quite a bit of discussion. Some people favour 600, some people favour red scotch bright pads, some people favour uh, even coarser paper. But uh, I'm going to use 400, I think. I was using 600, but I'm going to step down to 400 and perhaps give it a bit of a better going over. Well, this is my reference photo I'm going to paint from and uh, I've blown it up to A3 size because that's the size of the plate but it's quite pixelated, it wasn't a very good image to start off with in terms of quality but uh, you can still kind of see what's sharp and what's not and really none of the background is particularly sharp so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out the bee shape. It's quite a fuzzy old bee so uh, I'm going to be a little bit vague I suppose here and there but uh, cut it out as best I can and uh, then we'll use that as a shield while we do the background. too bad. Now what I'm going to do now is lay this over my bit of steel and just put in roughly with the graphite paper where these blue flowers are. I don't think it really matters desperately because they are pretty out of focus but uh, I'm just going to map them out with the graphite paper. And now I'm just going to position my B shield on there with the magnets. Well, it's taken me a bit of a while to get back onto this. This has uh, sat upstairs uh, for some time. So I'm going to give it a quick go over with the tack rag to get any dust off. And then I think we'll start by uh, coming in with this uh, really sort of um, dark greenish colour. Yeah, let's start with, with that. This blue is particularly, the blue flower is particularly in focus. Um, so I don't need to worry too much about shields and things, I don't think. And it's quite a strident blue, so I might just use the blue as it uh, comes out the bottle for that. Uh, yeah, see how we got on.
can say I haven't really been uh, religiously following the reference or anything, but uh, I think now it's time to go in with some white and just add some of these really bright highlights back in. <laughs> too much further that I'm just going to bring these areas in with a little bit more blue I think maybe try and get a, a purpley tinge to it now I think I'll put some uh, yellow in and just bring in these really quite bright areas here just just faintly really Okay, well now I'm going to use the graphite paper just to transfer a couple of key areas like the eye and the top end of the wing and the back end of this leg onto the uh, picture here. I don't want to bother with much else because uh, I don't think the positioning is too critical with anything else and it's all a little bit out of focus anyway so yeah. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, fiddly wouldn't it? Uh, now I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a very light yellow and uh, basically colour the whole thing, the whole bee in really and then start adding some of the highlights, things like the legs and things because uh, nothing's really quite white so I'm going to reverse the usual thing of dark to light I'm going to go light to dark a little bit here and uh, yeah, let's see what happens. And don't forget, there's a selection of my paintings available on my Etsy shop. Just search in Etsy for TT XLA Airbrush. I'll put a link in the description below. red into that uh, pale yellow just to uh, orange it up a little bit and then go over some of these more orangey areas and then perhaps uh, add in some more orangey hairy bits. I reckon that's the way to go. This bee now is uh, way too orange. Uh, <laughs> it's a very orange bee. So I think the way to bring this back is probably with some 
yellow candy, I reckon. Shall we give that a go? I think first though, before we do that, I'm going to go over in ordinary yellow and uh, bring that uh, the yellow areas back and then we could probably accentuate them with the, the candy I'm thinking. I don't know. We'll try it with the ordinary yellow first I think. Right, I think what I need to do now is go back over some of these uh, dark areas with the black and then uh, pick out some more hairy bits with the white and it's blow some faint green in here because the, the wing is sort of translucent you can see through that. I might do that first. I've got... Uh, can I? No, I haven't. I haven't got any green left so I'm going to have to mix up some green, I'll just blow in there, and uh, yeah, then I think we'll pick out the highlights in, in uh, no, we'll go with some candy, I think. I don't know, I'm kind of losing track of this, but a uh, bit of green in the wing first, I think. sort of the surrounding area, a bit of a, a coat with the uh, 4030 intercoat clear just to uh, seal it in before I start playing around with the candies. Right, I've got the other airbrush connected that I use for the candies and I'm just going to mix up um, a little bit of this candy gold. I've not got much of the thinners left but uh, we're going to have to do this, I should think. And uh, then I'm not going to go mad and blow over the whole thing. I'm just going to blow over locally where I want that to pick up, if that makes sense. So uh, let's give that a try. Now I'm going to go back in with the white and just add in the absolute highlights again because uh, obviously that candy has toned them all down a little bit so uh, yeah let's do that well there we go i think that one's probably about ready for clear coat now this one was supposed to be for Nikki, but uh, she's been through and look at it. She she doesn't really like it. She doesn't think it's uh, too good. I must admit, I, I'm not entirely taken with it either, really. I'm not sure it's uh, as good as it could be, but uh, it'll be useful practice to clear coat it. And uh, we'll see if we can get a nice clear coat finish on it without uh, mucking it up and it'd be good to uh, have a bit of a practice with that new clear coat and the clear coat might perk it up a little bit as well. Well it's been nearly a week and a half since we uh, finished this bee painting and uh, I've still got mixed feelings about it. I've posted some pictures of it 
on some Facebook groups and I had some very positive feedback. A lot of people seem to quite like it. And uh, sometimes I look at it and I think uh, I quite like it. Then other times I look at it and uh, not so much. So I, I don't know, it's a bit of a funny one, this one. Anyway, we're going to uh, attempt to give it a nice clear coat anyway. And uh, it'll be the usual thing, dust coat, seven minutes plus, and then uh, a middling coat, 10 minutes, and then a heavier flood coat, and then possibly another 10 minutes and another heavier coat. Uh, and we'll give it a bit of a tack rag off uh, before we start. Obviously the paint has uh, been hardening all that time, so maybe that'll help. Maybe that's been a problem before is that we've clear coated too soon after finishing. The, the paint does tend to continue to harden, I think, for quite some time. So yeah, let's crack on and see how we get on. Well, would you look at this? Unfortunately, we've got exactly the same problem we had with the rosy painting. Um, I'm sure some people will say I've coated it over too soon and that 10 minutes isn't long enough between the coats. Have left a little bit longer than 10 minutes, uh, probably more like 15 minutes between the coats. Uh, but uh, yeah. <laughs> It has uh, crackled up and, uh, you know, it looks like the, the, the lacquer has grabbed that paint and sort of pushed it apart and uh, caused this cracking. Anyhow, I didn't really want to leave it too long because it, if you look at the tin, the tin does clearly indicate uh, no more than 10 minutes between coats. Well... That was a little bit of a disappointing painting, wasn't it? I wasn't totally convinced in that B. I think the background wasn't quite right. It was out of focus on the reference, but it just didn't look right the way I painted it. And we did get the colours particularly uh, correct on the B either. Uh, it might seem like a simple thing to mix colours up right, but uh, it was a tricky old business, especially uh, on that painting it seemed and then of course we had the uh, the cracking of the paint and we put that clear lacquer over the top um, and people do recommend uh, a 2k clear I really haven't got anywhere I can safely apply a 2k clear at the moment so we are stuck really with uh, the single pack lacquers I know you can get 2k in aerosol, but that, that just brings the same problems back again, really. So I'm going to go back to the previous clear I was using. I did have some problems with that, but not as many problems as I'm having with this clear. Uh, I was recommended this clear, and it obviously works uh, very well for, for the guy that recommended it. But uh, unfortunately, it, it's not really... Uh, working for me. It might not be the clear, it might be something else I'm doing, but uh, I've ordered another couple of cans of the previous one I was using, so we'll be going back to that on the next project. Anyway, as I've already said, 
will show you the failures as well as the successes. So uh, this is definitely a failure. I'm not going to try and pull this one around like I did the rosy painting. I think it'll just be sanded off and I'll uh, use that steel blank for something else. So anyway, see you next time. Well, that's all for now. If you enjoyed it, press like. Subscribe if you want to see some more. And ring the bell to be notified when we upload something new.